And so today we're going to start off with insurance companies. Insurance companies and probably pension funds. Let's see where we get. Okay, so we got what is the diff how do life what are the different types of life insurance policies? Whole and term. So we got life policies and we've got whole life, which is a type of permanent. Uh, permanent. So we got whole life. Anybody know some other terms for it? Universal is another one that you might have heard. So I, mine is called the universal that I had. That I, uh, and then there's sometimes a uh, convertible, which is kind of a hybrid between term and permanent. So what does term mean? It's actually like a convertible term. Like sure, term. Maybe I should put it on here, the convertible term. But what is term? Length of time, good. What else about it? Yeah, usually the premium stays the same. Um, and that's where I have this policy that's a, kind of a convertible term policy. Um, it goes until I'm 80. I just did this review, I should know that better. I think it goes until I'm 80. I think it's almost 75. But, um, if you can't buy a term policy for longer than 30 years, nobody will sell you it. So if you're 20 something years old and you want a term policy, you can get this convertible term that allows you to go to age, maybe this is 75, I can't remember, 75. You make your premiums, but your premiums can escalate over time. So they're not fixed. So that there are different products out there that can that can get you that. But the, the basics to really get your arms around are term and permanent. So with term, you have a length of policy. Could be just anything, but usually up to most of them are, are less than or equal to 20 years. There are some 30 30 year products out there. Some 30, but not as common. <laughs> okay, so as Kenny said, it's usually a fixed. You did, what is that? You did, you did the Northwestern thing, right? So did you get a little schooling on? Yeah, I like a huge test. In fact, it's a Northwestern policy that I just described that I had with it that was just 75. I think it's 80. <laughs> Bothered me now. I probably should know it. So, uh, so it's usually fixed um, when it's a term policy like this, twenty or thirty years. <clears throat> fixed payment over the term, and then how do you collect? Question. You die. You die. <laughs> Which is kind of bizarre, right? So paid out at death. What happens if you don't die? Paid out at 100. Not term, but yeah, yeah, no, I'm on term. So what happens if you don't die during your 20 year term? It just poof, it just disappears. Right? So there, there's no payout. All the money that you paid just went straight to the pocket of the insurance company. So it's paid out at death if dead during the term. Yeah, there's going to be dead people that are dead people. You do have to stay dead, yes. You have to be shown clinically. <laughs> it's not good enough to just have your heart stop and then, yes, you have to stay dead. So paid out at death. Um, if you don't die, policy just expires. Policy expires without 
payout, without a payout, if you don't die. So it's really a death policy, more than a life policy. Think about it. That's the trigger, that's the event that triggers it. But somebody had their marketing hat on this, uh, and they came up with, let's call it a life policy, because you're helping out those people who are still living, I think. <clears throat> okay. Um, now on the, I wanted to kind of circle back to the, to the permanent policy, because that's where it gets kind of interesting with some of the investment products. But any questions on the term? So <clears throat> the insurance company, of course, has you as a 45-year-old male in reasonably good health. Uh, that means McCullough's looking to live. He's asking whether he's going to live to age 65. It's just kind of cut bare bones, right? Given his current health condition at age 45, I'm willing to give him a half dollar policy at $400 a month, and boom, away we go. And then the insurance company wins by having thousands of McCulloughs that are age 45 and, and potentially that same health condition. And hopefully not two of them, too many of them die by the age 65. So they've got thousands of McCulloughs all paying in their premiums. Of course, there's a 3% chance that some of those McCulloughs are gonna croak and we're gonna have to pay out 400,000. Otherwise, the rest of them, it's just gravy in our hand. That's how we make money at the insurance company, right? Permanent is a little bit different. There is for sure going to be a payout. You will die. So as long as you keep making your premiums, the, the insurance policy will stay intact and the insurance company will have to make a payout for sure. So that's what's different about these permanent things. Um, so I kind of ruined my thing here, but I kind of want to talk about term first. So more on permanent. So still idea of paid at death, but there's no term. And so the premiums are usually fixed. My parents started me off a little whole life policy when I was <laughs> less than a year old. How many of you had your parents do that? Jacob, Chisholm, Josh, anybody else? Got that little policy, that little cash value. So, um, question? Yeah, uh, I was just curious. Uh, so, if you have like a permanent one, like forever? Yeah. Uh, the longer you, you get more in when you die? Okay, that's where we're, where we're gonna get to, yeah. So the, then, so some of the other features of this is that you can build up a cash value. So they have a cash value that's built up within the policy over time. And it is just a fraction of your payment. So small fraction of premium adds to cash value over time. <coughs> so you got a couple things going on. You've got your policy amount. So the paid at death is your your policy value. I don't know, Kimmy, is there a better word than that? Do you remember from your class? I might come to you now. Uh, I feel like there's another word, but it's basically I have a $300,000 policy, right? It's the death benefit. Death benefit. That's what I'm looking for. Pay that death, the policy value, this is probably a better word, death benefit. That is how much you're going to get paid at death. Okay, so um, one of the things that the insurance company doesn't make immediately obvious to you 
is that suppose, for example, you've got a um, hundred thousand dollar policy, hundred thousand dollar death benefit, and a ten thousand dollar cash value at age sixty three. They got a nice little policy, $100,000 policy, death benefit, and a $10,000 cash value. And lo and behold, the Grim Reaper comes knocking at your door on, what is today? February 27th. Dead. Okay. So, boom. What is your payout on this policy? Kimmy, 100000 What about my cash? Like, don't live here. Yeah, it's gone. So, the cash value is kind of built into the program, is what they want to tell you, which is true. I mean, it, it, they're not completely hiding this from you, but they're kind of hiding this from you. Because let me give you another scenario. You can borrow against your cash value. So suppose that our person here, let's call him Fred. Fred borrowed against his cash value February 26th, even though that was a Sunday, so not quite a business day. But bear with me. February 26th, Fred borrowed against his cash value. So he's got $10,000 in his hand that he has to kind of pay back the insurance company, but it's really his money anyway. So you can actually take some of that money and then he dies the next day. How much does he get at death? No, he still gets the 100,000. And then he's holding the $10,000 cash. That's the little secret that the whole life policies don't make explicit all the time. So the cash value can be borrowed against, but it was your money anyway. In fact, you don't have to pay it back if you don't want. There's some premiums, uh, possibly premium changes in there because you have to pay the interest. But if you croak, your policy is dead. No, you're dead. Your policy is dead too, actually. They both kind of end together. <laughs> so, so that, this is one of the reasons why um, Dave Ramsey and myself are not fans of the permanent insurance. That, that feature of it is a little, a little unsettling. So if you take the loan out, you usually you will have to pay back it at an interest rate. So the, the company loans you your money because in order for the policy to stay at its value, you're going to have to pay that back. But if you happen to die the day after you take out the loan, you essentially got 110000 Whereas if you don't take out the cash value, you just have your death benefit of 100 So that is the way that stuff works. Um, I'll talk to you guys outside of class if you want more information on that. Because I've, I've had my parents. And the other thing you do have to be a little careful of is if you, if you um, don't pay, if you take a cash distribution of your cash value, then you might have a tax consequence on that too. So there's, there's some issues there with canceling your policy uh, to get your cash value out. <clears throat> okay, so all of this was to kind of <clears throat> talk about um, what does the insurance policy do to reduce moral hazard and adverse selection. So we just kind of keep coming back to these topics and we're going to keep coming hitting them with Allison, with the Allison book. So to lower moral hazard and adverse selection, <clears throat> what do insurance companies do? <laughs> Health screening, yeah. So if you have a screening and an application, a 
I'll put that as two separate things. So you get to tell whether you're a smoker or non-smoker, and they try to put you into different categories. So it's a it's called a screen in general, but screening literally with taking your blood and um, weight and all of that stuff for health purposes if you're getting a life policy. Okay, what else is done? How about the policy structure itself? The way payouts are done and other things. What do you usually have to do? Yeah. I had a question for the uh, Bill Obamacare effect a lot of that. Or is that more like just health? More, that's more health, it's more health related, not so much insurance related. What else do, and this is going a little outside of uh, life insurance, by the way, car insurance. What are some things that reduce moral hazard and average selection? What's that? Yeah, looking at financials, okay, what else? When you actually have an event, a car crash, what do you have to pay? Deductible. <clears throat> so those are co-pays. In the health insurance field, we have co-pays to try to reduce moral hazard. If you didn't have Okay, oh, I got a little sniffle. I'm going to go run to the doctor if it's all free, right? So they have money that's built in through deductibles and co-pays. Uh, co-insurance is really kind of a co-pay, but it's another buzzword, co-insurance. <coughs> Can they cancel your policy? Yeah. Go, go get yourself a DWI or two, and they're going to change your rates on you, right? So they're effectively canceling your old policy and reevaluating it. And then, of course, limits. You want to get a $5 million policy on your wife for what reason? Uh, yeah, right? So they can limit the amount that is placed on somebody potentially, too. Uh, just to reduce the possibilities there. Okay, we will pick up there on Wednesday. <laughs> Kaylee, I emailed you. Do you want to chat right now a little bit and get started? Yeah, I mean, you did.
You know, speaking of insurance, though, you think um, there might be some insurance data that uh, the public theft or something. You know, so check back. Um, there might be aggregated data. So if you haven't, you know, just do probability of crime, probability of theft, or because you could use that as a proxy if you found some data set that's a probability of a car being stolen. I'm kind of interested in that. Yeah, because the other cities that kind of broke it down into like property damage, violent crime. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't know if I was supposed to do that or. It, that it's up to you, where you, however you want to take it. If it, if, uh, you know, again, that's something you could talk about and maybe not do, or if you have access to it. So um, I want you guys to just do what you think is appropriate. And I'll, I will help you. I mean, I'm not trying to just throw that back at you, but oh, no. that's okay. I just wanted to make sure I was covering it up. Yeah, no, it sounds like that's good stuff. Okay. And you'll have, so you'll have that over time. How long of a time frame? Uh, I think I did. What? Oh, thank you. Um, I knew I had to get at least 30 data points. I started in 19. I went to an annual. I started in 19. 